All right, good afternoon. We're here on the 27th of January, 2024. All kind of crazy stuff happening in the politics and in the world right now. But we won't get into that. That's going to happen. And uh, But I am expecting all kinds of drama. I'm um, going to talk about uh, two things. I'm going to talk about canting the bow. I trust you can see that. That's straight up and down. And that is canted quite a bit. Okay, so I guess you know that when an arrow goes off of a shelf, it flexes and vibrates or flexes back and forth and straightens out. So it's liable to go left or right depending on how much it flexes and if you have your arrow perfectly tuned it's going to be it's going to work but now when you lay your bow down it flexes this way so it's got gravity pulling down against the bow I don't exactly know why but when I can't the bow a good bit about like that, I would say that's 90, that's 45, and that's probably 30. It's harder to pull back. I'm having trouble. It's harder to pull it back when you go down here because you, I don't think you can get your back into it. But I like the way it shoots. I don't, I'm not going to try to get into the physics of it, but I can, I can see that it's halfway between this and this is 45 and a little bit more right there. Okay, don't talk, we're gonna shoot three arrows. Oh, I also went back to my American archery 52 year old bow and it's a 45 pound draw. Now at my short draw weight is probably 42 or three is what it's actually drawing but I can report to you that no animals that I shot got away because I it wasn't strong enough it goes plenty deep in a deer it kill hogs or whatever that's about all I ever shot was hogs and deer you rattlesnakes every now and then to demonstrate this I guess what I'm saying is if you'd like to try canting the bow over, and I'll tell you this, if you're hunting in a hunting situation, imagine I'm sitting in a ladder stand. I don't like to stand up. Sitting in a chair in a blind in the woods, something like that. All you got to do is just raise it up and you're there. Now, if you're going to try to shoot like that, that's going to make you a lot more noticeable in the woods. Now, that's the first thing I'm going to talk about. And after I talk about and shoot three arrows here, I'm going to talk about Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah. And if you're out there looking to be offended, go ahead and pull your belt tight and get on your big boy pants because I'm going to tell you the truth uh, about what Jesus said. And I am expecting to offend some people. So hang on to your hat. Let's shoot this bow first. I feel like I get tighter groups by laying the bow over that far. That was a little higher. Not a whole lot, but I'm actually disappointed with that. I've been packing them a little tighter than that. All right, that's not the greatest group in the world, but it'll kill the hog. Okay, now what I'm going to tell you is this. I feed off of what people comment when I make my videos about Jesus. I feel like my job is to declare the name of Jesus before men, to help him find the lost sheep, and to 
spread the gospel. The other day when I made a video, I, for the first time in all the videos I've made, I pointed out that Jesus said that if you were not with him, then you were against him. And he also said that if you were not helping him gather the sheep, then you were helping him scatter the sheep. And I got some rather immediate um, negative blowback. Uh, one person said that I, who did I think I was threatening them? Threatening them by saying that Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me. And I pointed out to the person, I'm not the one that said that. I'm not threatening anybody. I'm just a messenger. Jesus is the one that said, if you're not helping me gather the sheep, you are helping scatter the sheep. And Jesus is the one that said, if you are not with me, you are against me. And I will add that that means there's no middle ground. You're either with him or you're against him. Once again, I'll say, I didn't say those words. Those are the words of Jesus Christ recorded in the Bible. My job is to declare Jesus' name before men. And he promised that he would declare my name in the throne room of heaven or before the Father, or before the angels. There's several, diff several different ways of saying it. Well, I thought that was an awfully good job description. That sounded like a job I wanted. So I took the job. I don't make up anything. I just tell you what the Messiah said. Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah, God in the flesh. Now, when Jesus came to earth, he was hated by many people. They were offended by what he said. <coughs> the religious leaders of his time were horribly offended because he essentially told them that all of their good works was not going to get them eternal life. Well, they thought it was. They thought that they were good. Well, I can also report to you, and maybe this will step on some feet too, which I don't mind doing at all because I didn't make this stuff up. No man is good. No, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of your works are as filthy rags, and no man is good, and no man is going to get one centimeter closer to the kingdom of heaven by relying on his good works or your good works or their good works and I'll tell you the simple reason why because in order to fool yourself into thinking that you are good you have to compare yourself to somebody else that's obviously a bigger mess up than you are. I was going to use a word that I shouldn't use if I'm claiming to speak for Jesus. There's no reason for me to cuss. But I, oh, I came very close right there. So in order to make yourself think that you're good, you have to find somebody that's a bigger mess up than you are. And you automatically, immediately are guilty of one of the worst sins, if not the worst sin, and that is judging other people. We are not to judge another man's servant. Everybody is God's creation, and God is their master, whether they like it or not. God is everybody's superior officer. God does the judging, and we don't. We are to look at ourselves. Jesus said, I believe he said, now I, I come up with these things, you know, without looking them up, but 
when you have done everything that he's commanded you to do, still consider yourselves to be unworthy servants. So we are never to consider ourselves to be worthy in any way. Now, if we manage to do a good thing, it's because Jesus has come into our heart and put a little bit of, sprinkled us with a little bit of goodness. Otherwise, everything we're doing is for self, for ourselves, for a selfish reason. I know it's hard to see yourself that way, see ourselves that way, but that's the gospel truth. None is good but God. All right. I guess that's it. I I hope I did stomp on some feet right there. I'm after the lost sheep. I'm after the ones that think that they're saved by their own works. I'm after the people that deny Jesus. Now, Jesus said another thing, too. See if you, how do you like this saying? See if you like this. Is this does this offend you? He said, if you declare my name before men, I will declare your name in the heavenly realms. And he said, if you deny my name before men, I will deny your name before the Father. All right, this is Gardner Israel signing off. Who is